We're gonna go in. Ingenious, resourceful, forward-thinking, and very plentiful. These are all ways Amen to, to that. describe the gnomes, a race of brilliant inventors that pride themselves on their discoveries. But they are also the same race that kind of sort of made their giant technologically advanced city into an irradiated trash heap. The fuck? They deadass had coronavirus in there or some shit. The fuck happened? In order to understand how the gnomes accidentally started this catastrophic failure, first we should go back to the very start of Nomanity. Nomanity. Long, long ago, when the Titans first shaped the world of Azeroth, the gnomes were actually mecha gnomes. I am ready! Mecha gnomes are pretty much like normal gnomes, except they're entirely robotic. At least they were, until there was this thing called the Curse of Flesh, which turned a bunch of robotic beings on Azeroth into the fleshy creatures we know today. <laughs> Is it weird to say that I feel like I might have actually preferred the gnomes as robots, so, like, you can take them apart and basically make them immortal so you can torture them to all eternity? You know? They, I mean, they would hurt, it hurt a lot more to kick them, but, you know, this way they live longer. The early generations of gnomes found themselves in the snowy mountains of Dunmoreau, a hostile tundra where if you didn't freeze to death, the creatures looking for a pint-sized snack will get you instead. From the very beginning, the gnomes were forced to rely on their quick wit and brilliant thinking to survive. You might feel a little tingle. But as the gnomes roam the snowy mountains of Dunmoreau, they would realize that not everything wanted to kill them. Salutations. Hello. I like large posteriors and I cannot prevaricate. Damn straight. Hooray! You dumbass gnome, you can't, you can't, large to you is bite size for us. What's he talking about? When he, he, he <laughs> never mind. We're not gonna talk about that. That that would get me in trouble. Hey. <laughs> the gnomes and their slightly taller dwarven allies were truly a match made in heaven. The dwarves and the gnomes. Were well, this dick sucking fucker left, man. The guy in our. Oh, whatever. We're just gonna watch this then were brilliant Fuck in their it. own special ways and formed an unstoppable friendship. The gnomes helped assist the dwarves in constructing the city of Ironforge, and the dwarves helped the gnomes build the city of Nomrion. So, here's the thing. A lot of the gnomes' ancient history is entirely unknown because gnomish culture is all about forward thinking and trying to invent the next big thing in a constant arms race for technological advancement. In other words, uh, an in-universe way of saying that there isn't really any old lore of the gnomes. Time to unveil one of my latest inventions! But there is one gnome we can talk about. A gnome who is the very embodiment of what it means to be a gnome and was determined to prove himself to create the most groundbreaking inventions no manity has ever seen. You face the pinnacle of gnomish technology! I am programmed for mayhem. Gelbin Mechatork is easily the most brilliant gnomish inventor that has ever graced Azeroth. I don't like how big his head is. Or his ears. Or his... 
mustache. But I won't lie, okay? He is the most normal looking gnome compared to the rest of them. He looks... This lo this guy looks like, you know, the dad... Not the dad, but like... Maybe the old dad or the grandpa in like a Disney movie, you know? The, who's like... Who always pretends to be old and brittle, but he's secretly like... Got a spring in his step, you know what I mean? Mechatork had invented hundreds of contraptions, like the Mechanistrider, the Gyromatic Adjuster, the Repairbot, the Dwarven Siege Engine, the Gigawatt Bread Slicer, the Chronoboon Displacer, the Gnomish Army Knife, Gun, and... Wait, he made guns? Yeah, he's not too far from being an American. Okay, I made like half of those up, but the point is, Gelbin Mechatork was oh. such a brilliant inventor, he needed a gigantic trophy case just to store all of his awards. Perseverance is the true blueprint to success. The Curse of Flesh is a huge moment in the lore because it's a curse from old god Yog saron Gun? Yeah. Who the fuck is Yog saron Is that that uh, guy that's on the, um, he's on the cover for... Battle net right now. Whenever I launch Warcraft, is he the the dude with all the mouths, the big mouth man? Yes. As Gelbin tinkered, he realized that the gnomes soon would have to put their ingenuity to the test. Hazard approaching. Intruder alert. Self destruct sequence initiated. At this point in time. The Horde had just destroyed Stormwind City in the First War. And during the Second War, they marched up north to Kazmodan with hopes of conquering the city of Ironforge and Nomergon. Taste Blaster! <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like fucking D-Day. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it... I mean... Have you seen the gnomes and how they talk and how they do things? I mean, they're not too far off of uh, the people behind D-Day. Let's just say that. The Horde were never successful in their attempt. To reward himself, Gelbin got a souvenir. A troll-made chair that he keeps in his study that is unreasonably comfortable. Anyways, um, after the victory, the gnomes and the dwarves helped assist in the reconstruction of Stormwind. To make the job easier, Gilbin wrote the schematics for the Deep Run Tram. And in this tram, I guess it was important to have an arena where contenders can beat the crap out of each other, and also an underwater section with the Loch Ness Monster in it. If it wasn't obvious- Why don't we have a tram? Why can't the goblins do some of this shit, man? We have zeppelins and boats. Why are we still in the Stone Age? How come the, the gnomes literally have this underwater, not sky rail, but it's like a sky rail. It's the final, uh, yeah, he's the boss in Wrath, the final boss in Ular, which is the current raid of Wrath. He's just a small pimple in that fight, though. He's actually the size of Northrend himself. Oh, shit. That's a big motherfucker. How do we? How the hell do we defeat him then? If he's if he's just that if it, that's just a small portion of him. Base yet, Gilbin was praised for his ingenious designs and was promoted to High Tinkerer of Nomergon and led his people into a glorious new future. It wasn't until a few years later that the High Tinker's leadership skills were really put to the test. This fucking drama alert. Hello, and welcome to the Nomergon Report, where we got some breaking news for you citizens. The undead threat rages on as the plague infects the innocent humans of Stratholme. Here's a statement from Prince Arthas Menethil on the matter. Purge. Hey! Oh. In other news, Salisbury steak will be on the menu for. What? What is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Imagine getting eaten by trogs. That's like... That's like that's like literally getting the shit beaten out of you by a Neanderthal. That's like if we lost to Neanderthals because of how smart we are. And we got... we Like, our military loses to a people with clubs. A bunch of clubs. 
While the rest of Azeroth dealt with undead and demonic invasions during the Third War, the gnomes had their own serious problems. You see, their dwarven allies had been digging around an ancient titan facility called Oldman, oh. and dug a bit too deep in regular dwarven fashion, and had awoken the race known as the Trogs. These dangerous woods were attracted by the rhythmic vibrations of Nomergon's machinery under the earth, and they dug straight to their city. Ah! Let's see how you handle this little gizmo! Yeah, like just sh sh just shoot them. Like this, this is the only smart gnome. Like, how are they fucking? Lo they're literally losing to Neanderthals. Oh, I'm getting attacked or something. The fuck? Oh well, I'm dead. The people who were just you know doing shit around just fucking decided to kill me. Well, I guess we're dead now. That's fine. Gilbin Mechatork was quick to react to the sudden invasion and put his oh plans into motion. God, the gnomes would set up defenses to hold back the marauding trogs, but the problem was the trogs could kind of just dig around all of the gnomish defenses and flank the defenders. Just reinforce your walls. If you can make like ray, like ray guns and stuff, why that? Why don't you have like stronger walls? Or get get your well, I mean, I guess the dwarves were probably dealing with something else, but, like, you can eat. I don't understand if you can, you have this much technological advancement, but you can't fucking have strong walls. These guys are, they got hands and feet. Bruh. We don't, we just push him back into his prison. Same thing goes for Cthulhu, as far as I remember. He's also the size of so Southern Kalimdor. Well, we should probably find a way to get rid of them permanently, because they sound like they're not cool, and they probably want to destroy the world. Trogs have elemental powers, if I remember right. Oh. Well. I don't know. Get help from the Night Elves. Because they do elemental shit, right? For the next five years, the gnomes tried and failed in defending their city. Eventually, Gelbin realized that their strategy needed to change and fast, or they'd lose the war. The High Tinker turned his attention to his council, a collection of brilliant gnomish inventors that could offer him advice. One of these chief advisors was one of Mechatork's closest friends, a gnome named Sicko Thermoplug. The idea the crazed inventor offered was an outlandish one, but it just might be crazy enough to work. The plan is simple. Gather all of the gnomish citizens and hold them in the upper floors of Nomergon. Release a toxic gas with a heavy volumetric weight to fill the lower reaches of the city and kill all- Yeah, but doesn't, like, if- Doesn't gas or any, like, air that's hot rise? So if it gets- if- if you have a shit ton of- trogs who are breathing and making the air hot in the lower regions you're just gonna make all the air rise and then you're gonna kill all the people at the top fucking idiots i thought they were supposed to be smart and the lore players kill Cthune during classic and in, in aq uh but yeah while the whole world was defending undead and demon invasions gnomes were dealing with this trog outbreak well i mean we're de like okay let, let's look at it this way okay Humans troll like we're, we're all dealing with the undead and the demons These are Neanderthals Okay, they're they're Neanderthals, you know the thing is with undead they're they're the same as Neanderthals, but they you know They infect people you can't become a trog Right and the demons are they, they come from this other world, so they have probably existential fucking powers No, Cthune doesn't actually die Oh, well, rats. I guess we have to deal with him again later. Like, these, these are... They're, they're Neanderthals, bro. Like, no way the gnomes... Like, if they're this ahead, like, in terms of technology, how are they getting fucked by Neanderthals? But, like, you know, we gotta deal with demons and undead. Doesn't make sense. Are actually not zombies in WoW? They just... They have a lot of power in the lore. 
Well, yeah. Because they're connected to the Lich King, right? So they technically have, like, power. Yeah, well, even even more so, yeah. Undead are even more fucking powerful. Like, how the fuck are they struggling? It's because gnomes suck. It just, it is what it is. All of the trogs. Set up clean wind domicilic filters so that the toxic gas does not reach any of the gnomes on the top floor. After the trogs are all dead, clean up the toxic gas, and then boom, the trogs are no longer a problem. Gilvin had no time to run over his trusted friend's calculations and took his word as truth. The gnomes then organized the plan and released the pressure valves to unleash this toxic radiation into the lower levels of Gnomergon. Wow, that, that looks like it worked. <laughs> Fucking idiots. Trogs have elemental powers which can break open the earth. Just shoot them. You have bullets. Assume you're referring to the whole Void Realm thing? No, I mean Cthulhu was pushed into his prison like Yogg was in Wrath. Imagine hitting a nail with a hammer. That's what we did to Cthulhu and Yogg lore-wise. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it's pretty easy to just pull pull nails out after they've been there a while. You know what I mean? Like the wood gets all fucked up, and you know, you don't know how many times it's been rained on. Calm down! I'm a doctor. Everyone, panic! <laughs> Gilbin was forced to watch in horror as his city fully collapsed in a matter of hours. Turns out, the radiation did absolutely nothing to the trogs other than make them really pissed and even stronger. The air filters failed, turning the gnomish citizens into sickly leper gnomes or just outright killing them. But for Sycothermaplug, everything was going according to plan. <laughs> You He's see, an evil over the fucking years, gnome. Thermoplug was filled with a bitter hatred and envy for Mechatork. Thermoplug felt like he was the one that was supposed to be the High Tinker and set up this daring betrayal to take the High Tinker title. Secretly, he anticipated for the plan to fail horribly, and he'd pin it all on Mechatork, and then Thermoplug would just swoop in and save the day. Somehow. According to Thermoplug's calculations, Around 30% of the gnomes would die before he swooped in to save the day. Well, um, he kind of fudged the numbers a bit because by the end, 80% of the gnomish population was dead. Good. Good. That's fine. That's fine by me. Gnomes, n see, gnomes are fucking stupid. They're literally going to kill, kill their own, like, people just to get ahead in life. And look what happened. I also, like, why don't they just move? Like, surely they can turn their city into some kind of, like, flying death fortress like the, like the undead have. have. Uh, how are the trogs gonna get over there? They can't. It's in the air. The trogs are Neanderthals. So they can't fly. But it's still one of the only lore instances where the player characters are actually credited for slaying said boss. Usually there are some other lore character that, that gets credited for it. If we pull an old god out of the world, it would do a lot of damage and destroy the planet. The Titans tried to do it with one, and it's part of why the Maelstrom exists. Yeah, we're the only we uh, were only credited with the invasion of AQ and didn't actually slay Cthune. Tragic. We just don't get the dub, do we? Why don't? Okay. Furthermore, Sicko Thermoplug went entirely insane and fell ill to the radiation he unleashed haphazardly. Sicko then proclaimed himself to be the new quote unquote king of Nomergon and ordered his crazed leper gnome servants to do his bidding. So in a weird way, he kinda sorta got what he wanted. The small amount of gnomes left looked for Mechatork for answers, and with a heavy heart, the High Tinker led the surviving gnomes out of Nomergon and fled to Ironforge, where the entirety of the gnomish population was downsized to a single room in Ironforge. 
It's what you get. But in classic, a group of adventurers stormed into Nomergon to kill Thermoplug. Hey, we did that. But they actually killed an engineered copy of him. But oh. then in Wrath of the Lich King, the Nomergon resistance and Alliance players tried again. But it ended with a toxic bomb 26 times more powerful than the first one exploding. Retreat! Which probably happened because of gnome plans. Thermplug knew this would be this would happen. He's crazy and jealous of Mechatoric. Yeah, fuck him. Should have you should have seen through it. You fucking, they're you got you, they're all gnomes. They should just like assume that everyone's out to get them because everyone is out to get them. But th look, this plan didn't work. Probably at the another the, more plans of a gnome. Why the fuck would it work? Gnome, gnomes are just they're just stupid, man. Our tale doesn't end there. In the short story, Cut Short, Gelbin Mechatork snuck his way back into Nomergon. The High Tinkerer returned to his workshop, where he found an old heirloom. That made him ponder his past choices, like, why the hell would you trust a guy named Sicko in the first place? Anyways, the room was booby-trapped. <laughs> Gilbin could hear Thermoplug approaching. He needed to think quickly, or he'd surely meet his demise. The brilliant engineer repurposed the trap Thermoplug had set for him. And when Thermoplug entered the room to kill Mechatork, he cut him in half. Jesus Christ. I will now quote the short story directly. My legs are in that half. Indeed they are, my friend. And with a razor-quick spring cut and steam carterization from your ruptured engine, the bleeding is probably minimal. A gnome does not sound like this. There is no gnome on this god-given planet that sounds like this much of a chad. There's just, it's not gonna happen. You guarantee when when they did this uh, this book or this novel where he's reading it from, the gnome fucking probably like you know begged and paid them, maybe even sucked a dick or two to have it have them change his voice, so he sound cooler. Cause he's probably gonna die here, right? The voice, yeah, platinum wow being funny, yeah, sure. Probably isn't accepting. There's probably a gnome under his desk right now. That's what I'm. That's what I'm guessing. I'd wait around to see if the rats find you before your trunk minions do. But I've seen enough of the latter for one day. You're just gonna leave me here? You don't deserve a quick death, sicko. You deserve a long, miserable existence in a dark hole surrounded by filthy monsters. In fact, you have created your very own prison right here. Better than any I could have built for you. You definitely outdid me on this one. Congratulations. Besides, if you do survive, I can't think of anybody I'd rather have leading these beasts than one of their own. Enjoy your remaining time in jail, my friend. Your sentence is almost over. And with that, Gilbin left his arch nemesis for dead. In Cataclysm, Thermoplug would later die when adventurers stormed into Nomergon one last time. But that isn't the last we saw of Thermoplug. Oh, f oh, fuck. Really? Oh my god, man. For in Shadowlands, I don't want to see this companion shitter. Called Mordal Evening Star. And the description of this pet reads Mordal is a ruthless tormentor of the smallest souls, who some say. He was known in life as Thermoplug. So, oh, after shit. the twisted king of Nomergon died, his soul was sent to the Maw, a realm of infinite torment and pain.
funnily enough, that is exactly that's where all, that's where they all belong. Anyways, Nomergon still has not been recaptured by the gnomes, at least not fully. And the story of the city's downfall is a very, very large portion of gnome lore and wow. For the most part, the race has kind of just been the funny comic relief and hasn't really been developed. I, I don't agree with funny comic relief. Fucking where? They're just annoying. They're, they're not fun to look at. They're ugly. I mean, sometimes they don't look too bad, but it's it, like it's only when the girls look like normal midget people or sorry, little people. It's only when the girls look like normal little people that the male gnomes look deformed. They look they don't look normal. You just need to like get rid of them. At least Blizzard like put effort into making the, the female gnomes look like n normal little people. At the same time, the Horde had an event to kill uh, Zella Zane out of the islands in Duratar. Because apparently he wasn't dead either. As a Shadowlands player, fuck the Maw. Zalazane was a childhood friend of Vol'jin and, way, and is way more powerful in the game than they made him look. What's your favorite race? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm really digging trolls, but that, I might be biased because I am a troll. Um, but like in, in terms of like aesthetic and... Um, I don't know, I, I guess power, like it's... It's tough. I, I, I like the worgen aesthetic because I think like Victorian like kind of things like, uh, you know, dark rainy nights where the like the like the Van Helsing type shit. I think that stuff is is pretty cool, but I haven't played much of the worgens. The updated no models in retail. The females look like crack like they're crack addicts. Well, I guess we'll have to see then when we eventually get there or expanded upon much except for uh, what the fuck no the these things no ew yeah maybe we can talk about that ew no video. i don't want to see these any okay they're gone i don't want to see those anymore man